We're watching this. By far the most exciting MMORPG in years. So it's by the Lazy Peon. Loads of you guys probably know the Lazy Peon. Um, and yeah, it's, it's about Ashes of Creation. Okay. Uh, yeah, he started telling us about like what is Ashes of Creation. Um, it's an MMO, an upcoming MMO, and a little bit of the backstory about it. Um, let me just put this across here. And then we got on to the node system. So let me just rewind that a little bit. Yes. Ashes of Creation's biggest innovation, in my opinion, is its node system. And it's this system that ensures that no two servers will ever be the same. This is Basically, cool. I like Basically, when this. the game launches, the world will be empty. However, over time, well camps, villages, towns, cities, and sprawling metropolises will pop up in locations where players earn XP from killing mobs, gathering, or doing quests. There will be over 100 nodes scattered throughout oh my god uh, over a hundred nodes jesus i had no idea a hundred plus nodes on the world at launch wow so this is how the game works if you if you guys haven't seen it obviously he's talking about how the how the nodes look at this one like 114 and um, how they develop and it's just where the players are where the players do stuff playing the game the nodes get um more experience and they start to grow into cities so and then it go it'll go from like a village to a town to like a city to a metropolis throughout the world at launch and each node will have a different layout and appearance depending on the race that contributed the most xp to it as well as the buildings the mayor decides to place so if for example orc players contributed the most xp to a node the node will then have an orcish aesthetic the same is true for every other race in the game and these racial aesthetic changes are applied to the node every time it's leveled up so a town could start with an elven aesthetic but if dwarves contribute the most XP to progress it to the city stage, it then changed to a dwarven theme. That is cool. That is, that is cool, right? It's not just me. That is really cool. It's just really interesting because, yeah, every server will be different, but it's just, it's going to be ever changing depending on, you know, maybe there's a guild, uh, a guild of elves. Every, everyone's an elf and they've all decided it because you could do that for like this and everybody wants to be an elf and it's a guild that only accept like elven players or something and they just go to like a node somewhere out like in the distance where maybe not too many players are or something and they just start doing stuff there and they basically you could have like one maybe two guilds or something they just make that node i have to, I have to just play in the game and play in the game logging in every day and just doing stuff and then all of a sudden you get like an elven village pop up and then an elven elven town and then an elven city like how cool would that be i think that'd be amazing this game reminds me kind of bdo and i don't like bdo because it's too massive I've no, I never really got into BDO, so that's not. I, I, I don't really have anything to comment through that. But I want, to, I just want to watch this video because I want to know more about this. The thing is with Ashley Creation is it probably won't be out till like the end of next year, if not 2024. We don't have a release date for it yet, but that's what the speculation stuff is at the moment. So it's a ways off yet. This game looks too good to be true. We'll see, man, because you know. Steven, the creator of this, was a guy... I mean, I used to play a lot of Arcage, but he's a, a multi-millionaire, a very successful entrepreneur. Um, he's got a lot of money, and he's basically gone, I don't like the way MMOs are, and I want to make a MMO that has no pay to win, no convenience. You just got to get on the game and just play it to get strong. And um, yeah, it's just... I, just, yeah, I want to find out more. So what happens when every node in the game is leveled to max? Well, that can't happen. Building up one node to a city, for example, will lock out adjacent nodes from reaching the same level, which in turn also locks or unlocks various quests, dungeons, or bosses. Players will have to initiate node sieges to de-level a node if they wish to progress adjacent nodes. Looks nodes cool. come in four different node types, 
militaristic, scientific, divine or economic, each of which have their own special perks adding further variety into this system. Like I said, the node system is designed so that no two servers will be the same. If you take a break from the game for a few months, you could come back and the location of all major cities is completely different, different taxes, buildings, different mayors voted to be in charge of the node, and different node racial aesthetics. Wow. That's a lot of changes. That could be a lot of change. I, I've just taken a three week break from, from Lost Ark and imagine coming back and Punika's not, not there. <laughs> it's something else. So maybe there's been like a city that you've just always been in. You get to know the city and then it's gone. That would be both cool and weird straight at the same time because if you just about get to know where like the NPCs are or your way, you get to know your way through this town then all of a sudden it's changed. Very interesting. I wonder how that's going to gonna hold players attention or if it's gonna piss people off by they get used to something and then it's gone it's changed or maybe it'll just be amazing because it's just forever changing no other mmorpg i could though on a on a potential negative thing i could see that being a bit annoying though depending on how it works it could be very annoying go from one city getting to know it and then it, it changing and it you know there being a siege, it gets de-leveled, and then something else is a city. And maybe you liked farming a certain area and taking stuff back to that town, and then you can't do that. You gotta go somewhere else and just like relearn it. I think it's the idea that you have to relearn everything. Interesting. Till I play this game, no hype for me. G has I haven't played it yet either. Before, and we've already seen this system working up to the village stage in last year's Alpha 1 test. On top of the node system also lies the node political system where players compete to become the node's mayor. The process of how this is done varies depending on the node type. Scientific node mayors are voted for democratically, militaristic node mayors are chosen by victory in a last man standing tournament, economic wow. node leadership is sold to the highest bidder, <laughs> and divine node governance is given to the player that completed the most node quests. Once a mayor wow. has been decided, they can set the tax rate and decide which building projects to pursue. The only way to remove a mayor is by destroying the node via the node seed mechanic. Bad mayors will exist, yes, they will cause drama, and this is all by design as any virtual world has good guys and bad guys. <laughs> Some nodes will naturally die out and de-level due to an inactive mayor. Others will need to be taken out by force. Some mayors might tax their citizens so hard that everyone leaves and there's no money for upkeep. Can you imagine? Right guys, if you were mayor, be honest with me now, would you be a good mayor or an evil mayor? Would you whack the taxes up really high and try and get like short term like gain and just get a load of money or whatever? I don't know if that's how it works. If you end up getting the money yourself, would you be evil or would you be good? I think, uh, <laughs> I think the amount of drama that could be caused by somebody being like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm all good. Yeah, vote me in. It'd be amazing. And they get like democratic or whatever, and they, they get voted in, and they just become a complete dick. <laughs> just <laughs> that would be that would be this funny. This is all intended with the design principle of actions having consequences. So in between. Yeah, that'd be interesting, the final man. thing worth mentioning about nodes is the citizenship and player housing systems tied to it. Once a node reaches village stage or higher, player housing then becomes available. There's three types of player housing. Real space in node housing, real space freeholds, which are basically plots of land within the node's zone of influence, and instanced node apartments. Players who have invested Ooh. into any of these types of player housing can then register to become citizens of the node, which brings with it various benefits listed. Access to limited functions and service buildings within the node. Access to merchants that offer specific types of enchantment stones or stat uh, migrations. Access to upper tier crafting benches. Access to weekly allotment of core material that can be accessed from the node reliquy. Is that you say? Uh, access to buffs from certain events. Access to titles, organization, organizations and religions. Participation in the node's government. Voting or running for office. Other stated benefits include reputation, honor, loyalty, and merit, ma'am. The question is, would you do that? Connor! Who knows? Who knows, Who knows eh? <laughs> Maybe. 
you can only become a citizen of one node at a time per account, so this is an important decision designed to make players want to invest in and defend their node. Ah. Nodes are not owned by guilds, and the more people that register for citizenship at a single node, the more expensive it becomes for future citizens to join. Oh, shit. You will lose citizenship if your node is destroyed in a node siege. In addition, you will also lose your player housing and a portion of the resources stored in your node's warehouse. Oh, so it's really in your best interest to defend and invest in the node that you're a citizen of. Wow. So, you... Invest in making a node, like, level up by doing stuff around there. Maybe you just like the area. Maybe it's mountainous and hilly and you like that. Or maybe it's a forest. Or maybe it's just, like, open plains and rivers and stuff. So you find an area of the game that you enjoy and you like. And then you do stuff around that area. You invest in, like, player housing. You play, like, a load. And then you go, I'm going to take a little bit of a break. You come back. Your whole area has been destroyed been sieged you've lost your house loads of resources um what would you would you quit this is where the node system is very interesting but if you were just put in a shit ton of hours and maybe you're feeling slightly burnt out with the game and you took a little bit of a break and you'd already had like a house and loads of stuff take a bit of a break or maybe real life gets crazy work you have a kid or something like that right and then you come back to the game and it's all gone would you continue? Another completely unique thing Ashes of Creation is bringing to the MMO genre that has never been done before is its season technology. This was recently shown off and working in a dev live stream, but basically every one or two weeks, certain biomes will change seasons from oh, spring, cool. summer, autumn, or winter. In doing so, the appearance of monsters might change, there will be buffs or debuffs to your character, dungeon entrances or mountain passes might become frozen over or inaccessible, some gatherer resources might become unavailable during certain seasons which might have an economic impact wow. and there will also be different weather effects depending on the season this coupled with the ever-changing node system gives ashes of creation the potential to be the mmorpg that has the most interesting immersive and evolving world we've seen out of any mmo to date yeah that's it leave the game log um Again, my point still stands. So this is it, Roadhouse. Go on holiday for, for two to three weeks or months worth of... Uh, yeah, two to three weeks and months worth of progress is gone. It's a rough one. That could happen. It could still be there. Um, I think it's both... I think it's a double-edged sword because I could see some people getting really annoyed with, um, with this, with, with it always changing and potentially losing everything they've done. Yeah. Man, I don't know. It's an interesting one, though. Log in a few weeks later. The node has changed. The season has changed. New events and quests have spawned. It'll feel like you've zoned into a completely new location. Adaptive PvE. On the PvE okay. side of things, something I find especially interesting with Ashes of Creation is how content such as dungeons and raids will have adaptive difficulty based on the performance of the party against previous bosses. So let's say your group absolutely steamrolls the first boss in a dungeon or raid. The next boss will then scale to be more difficult, unlocking additional mechanics and as a result drop better loot. In addition, Ow. node development also has a big impact on PvE difficulty and content availability too. The higher the node level, the higher the level of mobs in the surrounding area. Perhaps there's a dungeon with five bosses inside, however the fourth and fifth boss rooms only become accessible once the node has developed to city or metropolis stage. Additional mechanics cool. and higher loot potential could also be locked behind the leveling of nodes. Obviously, this will you take a lot of balancing, but I like the direction they're going in when it comes to PvE difficulty. If they get it right, dungeons and raids could become infinitely difficult based on performance, which could also open up yeah. the potential for competitive PvE leaderboards if there was some kind of performance rating added on top of this system. Shit, the bed. So, wow. I, I, I had no idea. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's really unique, actually. So every dungeon is not just the same. You go in to the, you go and do the dungeon. I, I don't know if it's like a weekly or a daily thing and you go in. Man, for me, the graphics here are outdated. I, this this is like um, alpha footage from maybe like a year ago. I don't know the exact time for it. 
but a lot of the footage we're seeing is stuff that the lazy peon has obviously recorded in previous tests and recently i don't know exactly how recently but recently they've just upgraded from unreal engine 4 to unreal engine 5 so i think the graphics will probably look better than what we're seeing here i mean i've got this on on 1440p um but yeah remember it's like recorded content um which could be scaled down a little bit depending on how lazy peons recorded it then put into a video Co you know coded and put in into it uploaded to youtube and then i'm streaming it i'm watching it then streaming it so you can lose quality along every single one of those processes um i think it's more of a jump in game kind of thing and and see it however it's promising that they've just gone from unreal engine 4 to 5 it was a lot of stream sniping as well could it could yeah Caravan Ashes system. Of creation won't be the first MMO to introduce a caravan system. Shout out to Silk Road Online. It's <laughs> certainly not a common thing we've seen in any of the other top MMOs in recent years. I think the last MMO to have something like this was Arcage. And I, I mean, I used to play a lot of Arcage. This is Arcage here, where you can make these trade packs. You maybe you do or don't know about this. You can make these trade packs. Like if you got a house like this house. Um, and you go, you you farm stuff like like this or whatever. You plant it around in your personal lot. People can't get it. You can farm stuff, get resources, and then go and use those resources to make a trade pack. Uh, then you can carry one on your back, or you can like go on like a, a a mule and you can go a bit faster, or you can make like vehicles like this and store a couple, or even boats and go across the continent. However, if you there's loads of different places. You go from like your zone and there's loads of different zones like we saw with the map um, for, for Ashes, right? Loads of different zones and you take them to an, uh, a neighboring zone and you might get like a little bit of gold for each one that you hand in. But if the further you take them, generally the more gold you got. And if you took them into places that had PVP enabled, um, that was worth even more. Higher risk, higher reward. But if somebody kills you, this like dropped on the floor and then they could pick it up and go and hand it in. You would still get like 10 or 20% of the gold value of what it was worth to hand it in. But basically, you could lose a lot of your own money. So it was like a high risk, high reward. And it was phenomenal because the PvP and the content based around... I would go on like my galleon and I would see a trade ship that had like 10 people on and a load of, of trade packs plus trade packs on people's backs and something. And then me and the guild would just go and like kill them take and like take their trade packs. And it was drama and it was engaging and the PvP was great and it was really good fun. So, I mean, this is one of the things I miss the most about Arcage. And Steven is very influenced by Arcage. Steal my corn, how dare you? Dude, it was really good. I had stuff stolen from me quite a bit, but the amount of stuff that I stole from people, you can even do it with fishing. You'd get a fishing boat on Arcage, go out to the water. It was amazing. You would fish and it was extremely high risk, high reward um, because you'd have a fishing boat, which was kind of slow and you could load it up full of fish. And generally it would just be you on your fishing boat because people would go out and loads of people would fish there. And then you would be full. You'd catch like five fish or whatever, fill up your boat. And then you'd have to go to like a, a, a town that had... Um, a place where you could put in your fish like a little dock um a little harbor you could put in your fish and you just like instantly sell them but you were vulnerable because out in the open sea it was it was all pvp you were vulnerable to people on your own faction killing you and stealing your boat and they'll take your boat and it would like despawn after like 20 minutes their fish would just go and then they could take your fish they could destroy it andy oh my god what a hero, hero. we're talking about arcage and then we're watching watching the lazy peons video Andy, thank you for the raid, my friend. How'd your stream go? We're watching this. By far the most exciting MMORPG in years. So it's by the Lazy Peon. A load of you guys probably know the Lazy Peon. Um, and yeah, it's, it's about Ash Ashes of Creation. And we've just, we've just been talking about adaptive PBE difficulty, the seasons, node citizenship, node politics, the node system. Um, and we're just going through this, talking about the caravan and, these, and Lazy Peon's putting some information about Arcade values to play. Um, but yeah, we're having a bit of a watch by. Welcome, Raiders. I really appreciate you joining the stream. How'd, you, how'd your stream go, ma'am? How'd it go? What would you get up to? Tell me, tell me, tell me stories. Storage in Ashes of Creation is awesome. not global. Warehouses where you store your items will be local to each node, and gatherable resources for crafting will be more or less plentiful based on biome or region. Let me, let me ask you, Andy, are you interested in Ashes of Creation at all? 
as I said, we we're just having a bit of a watch by. We've done some Lost Dark. We've smashed out some Volta and some things and just having a bit of a chill, a bit of a talk. Sped run all my weeklies on KR. Going to focus NA now. Just getting some gold. Oh, wow. Nice one, dude. Um, I think it's not quite my pace. I'm willing to try it though. No, that's fair. It's not going to be out until potentially the end of next year or even 2024. But I just I just want to want to have a look at it and to watch the video, probably slap it on YouTube and stuff. So, yeah, I really appreciate the the uh raid, dude. It's been a, it's been a, it's been a while. Yeah, I think it's worth a try. De yeah, I think it's definitely worth a try. It's um it's going to be $15 a month. No, no buy-in price. And there's no pay to win. No pay for convenience. Nothing like that. So, have you been well, mate? Good. All good, thank you. Yeah, good. Yeah, just, I need to say, just curious about this. I took, I took like a three-week break from Lost Ark, and I come back today. Yeah, I was uh, playing some Tarkov, playing some uh, Elden Ring, a few other bits. I, I reinstalled Divinity Original Sin 2 as well, but I haven't, haven't actually had a chance to play again yet. But, yeah. This means that players will be able to take advantage of localized economies by transporting goods from one region to another based on supply. Non sub game would have been better. This okay. is done through the caravan system. Let's say you're a citizen of a node located in the desert biome. People need a lot of wood for crafting, but it's hard to come by in the desert. You mm. travel to the forest, spend a few hours collecting or buying wood from other players. Big damage. You want to transport <laughs> it back to the desert to sell on for profit or use Stay on mount, I know, right? You can go to the store. <laughs> the snail mount. I'm going to get the fastest mount there is. Snail mount. You see, you see people walking past you. <laughs> it's funny. So you'd be there on your snail mount. It's just like doing this. And everyone just starts walking past you. All right. Good to see you. Good day, isn't it? And they're just walking back. And you're like, fuck. I'm on a mount, man. I'm supposed to be faster. <laughs> storage at the forest node and spawn a personal caravan to then transport those goods. In doing so, the area around the caravan will become a moving open world PvP zone, in which players cool. can choose to either attack or defend the caravan. There's incentives for either side. This is a risk versus reward system in mm -hmm. which you could potentially lose your stuff if your caravan is successfully raided. The whole Ooh. existence of the caravan system also opens up the possibility for players to become mercenaries and sell protection services to players wanting to transport their goods for coin i love this this system for me is awesome this game also reminds you of new world and maybe it'll end up the same oh I, I hope it doesn't end up like new world new world the thing is i i called out new world as being absolute trash um and it is and it was and it died uh it has some kind of expansion or something but there was loads of things wrong with it and it died i played it for one day, completely rid it off, told everybody to stay away from it. When I was playing Lost Dark on like Russia, and then the game come out, and everybody who was watching me and stuff then was going, oh, well, we're going to try a new one. I was like, don't bother. Don't bother. It's going to be a complete flop. And it absolutely, it just slammed on, died. Absolute dead. It was, yeah. But I don't think this will be the same. Which is also pretty cool. Monster coin events are a multiplayer horde defense activity that can take place at nodes. Oh shit! These events must be triggered by something significant happening in the surrounding area, such as node advancement, the death of a world boss, or constructing a certain building in the node. During a monster coin event, players must choose to either attack or defend. Attackers can use monster coins to transform into a monster and attack key objectives in the node, whilst defenders must defend against the attacking horde of monsters. You can be the monsters. You can spawn monsters. I will wait a bit, just like with New World, to see what people think. No, that's all good. I mean, I'll I'll stream this when it comes out, but so will so will a billion other people. So you have loads of content for it. Um, but wow, um, you can become. Wow. Monster. Monster coin events cannot de-level a node. However, they can kill important NPCs or disable buildings at the node for a while oh, if shit. the attackers are successful. Monster coins can be obtained via rare drops in-game, and the rewards for this activity are entirely cosmetic. Cool! The final point I want to make when it comes to what makes Ashes of Creation so unique is the sheer scope of the game. When you combine all the features and innovations this game will have, it's surely going to be the biggest fantasy MMO ever made to date. Wait, so that snail mount? 
is also have it's surely gonna like be a, a camel fantasy <laughs> what the mmo ever who come up with this stuff man wow so it's a snail that also has legs that is that is interesting that is interesting Never played arcade to play New World. Go to play level 50 and drop the game. The same mobs and stuff put me off it. I would give this intent when it comes out. I'm sure um, they learn to have servers that are big enough to handle the sheer amount of people play. Oh, dude. The, the thing is with with this, um, may, maybe every MMO is like, we're going to do this right. But I think Steven specifically, because he is such an avid MMO fan and player, and he was so fed up with how like arcade wires and other games were and he's like this is how you you need and how you want to make a game and then he's like i'm, I'm just gonna do it and he's got the money and the funds to do it because he's a multi-millionaire and he's very successful and successful kickstarter and successful like backing and stuff like the the game i think will actually genuinely because this is this is supposed to be the game that, that everybody wants, right? Not everyone's going to be drawn to the aesthetics of it. Some people want something maybe more cartoony. Maybe people want something more like Arcage or whatever. Um, uh, or sorry, not more like Arcage. I feel like it's got quite a lot of influence from Arcage, more like Lost Ark. Um, but I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna do right by a lot of people. I think he's gonna do. You can't please everyone, but I think he's gonna do right by a lot of people with this. Maybe I'll stream it. I'm not a big streamer, so force myself to play something for content. With a small amount of views, it's not a good idea. No, you need to play what you like. Also, YouTube. Like, Ever loads of YouTube. Date. Nine different playable races, both with male and female options. 480 square kilometer world size at launch. Jesus. Fully open world game where you can go from one side of the map to the other. No loading screens. Dungeons, <laughs> raids, world bosses, open world PvP with a criminal system. Caravan PvP, castle sieges, node sieges, arenas, duels, guild wars crafting and artisan system, monster coin events, political system, citizenship, player run shops, taverns with parlor games, top tier wow. character customization, transmog cosmetic. Oh yeah, yeah, guys, the, the character customization in this, I'll probably save it for my next stream. Also, I think there's a, a video on it, it's all oh, dude. Attic collection, insane. 64 different class combinations. Oh my God. Class base, fighter fighter equals a weapon master. Oh, this is cool. Do you, you pick two? So you've got fighter, tank, rogue, ranger, mage, summoner, cleric, and bard. And you pick two and you can pick the same. And that's what these are. And you could, these, I guess, will be more of like your traditional. The tank bard. What is a tank bard? It's a siren. That is, that is really cool. Yeah. Bard is, bard is just here. So, um, this again, this takes a lot of influence from um from Arcage. Because Arcage you had different skill trees, basically. You'd have like a, a defense skill tree, you'd have more of like uh, you'd have a mage one, you'd have like a, a, a bow one, you have the right, and you picked three of them. You picked three of them, and then you only had enough skill points to like go so far during through each one, you'd make a kind of build. And depending on which three you chose was what class you were. So you could get like Spell Dagger, which was like Mage. Um, I think it was I don't know, Dagger. It might be Dagger Spell, actually, which is what I played a lot. It's been a while. It was like Mage and Stealth with Witchcraft or something. I can't remember. There was something like that. And it was, it was really interesting. Really, really interesting. But this is cool. So a fighter tank, you're a knight. Tank, tank, guardian. Oh, this gives you so much so many options but there will definitely be some i reckon that come out to be more like cookie cutter ranger ranger hawkeye ranger mage scion sometimes you get things like ranger mages that just like don't work and like i like, like here we go like a ranger rogue that's something that can work very very well uh, you can even get mage road night spell so that that would be something that i would be quite interested in because i love to be able to like go stealth go around and just like open up and like burst Burst on someone. That could be really cool. Arch Wizard. Like pure damage. Summoner. Jesus. You even got like Warlocks. So many. What would you choose? This is really cool. But wow. 
tank bird. There will be for sure be meta classes and some that are unique. So yeah, many so many combos to try. There is a lot. The cleric rogue, the cultist. I I think this is really cool. I'm also overwhelmed by it. Three it's really forms cool. of player housing, both open world and instanced. Achievements, leaderboards, gathering, questing, hybrid combat system, player-driven economy with localized storage, pets, massive guild system with guild halls, both wow. land and water mounts, and 18 different biomes in the world. 18. Every week or two, the season changes, which makes zones feel completely different. And if all of that wasn't enough, something I often forget is that the game will have an entire arcade-style naval system where you can oh sail across God. the ocean on massive ships. Oh, arcade naval stuff was amazing. Oh, it was one of the best things in the game. We were talking about it a minute ago. It was so good. The PvP. This is a fishing boat. This is this is somebody in our cage on like a fishing boat, and then there'd be like me turn up on a galleon with like a whole crew, like a, like half the guild, or whatever, and we would just annihilate them. There'd be sometimes you'd have like 10, 20 people fishing all with their own boat, and people would be fishing. Somebody would come up and attack a boat, and like the other people would stay there fishing. They'd be like, "Oh, tough luck, mate. You're getting attacked," and, and they'd be like screaming like. Help me, help me, help me. And then, like, people just take their boat and go off, and you get people there and just fucking ignore them. <laughs> it's so funny. Oh, it was harsh, though. I actually had it happen to me, though, but fucking hell. And partake in naval PvP and naval trade routes. I've probably forgot well. to mention a few features in that little ramble, but my point is this game will be bloody huge. So huge that I can totally understand why people have been skeptical about the project since the inception. But at this point, we have seen most of these things that I've mentioned at some point in development live streams in recent years. Mm. So it's definitely all stuff that's being worked on. The only content we haven't seen much of at this point is the naval aspect. Wait, 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 chat. How much did that remind you of Asmongold? The only content in wait, wait. recent years. Right. So it's definitely. You ready? I'm not talking about the balding either for any of you that might start Keck W. I'm talking about the eyebrows. You ready? All stuff that's being worked on. <laughs> Totally Asmongold, right? Am I right? The only content we haven't seen much of at this point is the naval aspect That's of him. the game. Yeah, it's him, right? <laughs> been shown some 3D models for the ships. Totally, well as totally the Asmongold. Monster boss, so hopefully we'll see more of that soon. <laughs> at this point, you're probably saying, wow, Peon, all of that sounds great, but I don't want to wait until 2030 to play this thing. Hasn't the game been in development for years already? Yes, it has. But unfortunately... <laughs> the way that he's like... Yes, yes, it has. Devs made it specific for him. They mu <laughs> they fucking did. Definitely, my MMO hungry friends. This is a genre where games take a long ass time to make. ESO, Lost wow. Ark, and Arcade, for example, all took over seven. Oh shit! Elder Scrolls seven years. Lost Ark seven point five years. Arcade seven years. Five and a half, five five. Terra four. Final Fantasy XIV, nine years after three year re- Oh, wow. Years okay. of development until launch. Jeez. Final Fantasy XIV was in development for nine years before A Realm Reborn released. Jeez. Right now, Ashes of Creation is about five and a half years into development. And with it being a particularly ambitious project, I still think we've got a while to wait. That being said, since moving to Unreal Engine 5, their development speed seems to have gone through the roof with significant progress shown wow. every live stream. So maybe it's closer than we think. The other stuff! So far, I've only explained the unique aspects of Ashes of Creation, the things it's doing to push the genre forward, but the game also has a lot of other features that you're likely familiar with from other MMOs. Okay. So next I'm going to break down everything the game has into the following categories. PvE content, PvP oh, content, shit. roleplay content, the world, professions, class and combat system. As nice. this is such a colossal game with so many different aspects to it, it's impossible for me to talk about every feature in depth and answer every question you might have. Thankfully, there's a fantastic resource already available called the Ashes of Creation Wiki that's constantly nice. being updated and has thousands of pages worth of information. Any specific questions you might have, check the wiki and there's a 99% chance you'll get an answer. Shout out to Lex, who's been keeping this up to date over the years. Good on you, Lex. The PvE content in Ashes looks a little bit like this. 
Content is tailored for group sizes of 40, 16, and 8 player groups. The eight. maximum size of a party is 8 players. Dungeons are designed for these 8 player parties. 20% of dungeon and raid content is instanced, whilst 80% are open world. Oh shit! Raids and dungeons okay. are designed for group sizes of either 16 or 40 players, and raids and dungeons both use the adaptive difficulty system that I spoke about earlier in this video. Ashes of Creation will have many world bosses designed to be contested by large groups of players and guilds. 20 FPS gaming. <laughs> Remember, this is I. I'm pretty sure. I can't say. For, I can't say for certain. I'm pretty sure this is like old footage. This is probably Unreal 4 footage, right? Because remember they've upgraded to Unreal 5 recently. So while you might look at this and go, "Oh, this looks like maybe what well, Elder Scrolls Online or, or something," might look like. I, I think the the finished product will look better than this. These world bosses will have a chance to drop legendary equipment and a tiny chance to drop eggs that can hatch into non-permanent limited time flying mounts. Oh my god! Flying mounts! Oh dude. Due to how they're designed, world bosses are also likely to attract open world PvP with multiple guilds fighting for the glory of the boss kill and loot. That will be really cool. Again, another thing that's both ridiculously frustrating but also really good and really good content is when a boss is there and you're like, this is fucking awesome. And you get a big plan going with your guild, plan a day, you start going for this boss. And then as you start attacking it, somebody sees it. And then in area chat or something, it's like, oh, XYZ guild have started attacking the dragon. And then people just come up and just start trying to kill you while you're killing it. And then your guild like mostly dies because you're fighting the boss at the same time. And so there's people hitting you in the back and then you respawn while they're attacking it and then you attack them and god and then there's like a big like it just turns into be the arcade all over this was arcade 100 percent you used to start fighting a boss and then it just used to turn into a, a massive pvp fight for like two hours and then the boss would despawn and then everybody separates um and nobody would get it or some one side would like get too tired or oh, just like burn out with the fight, man. It's crazy, Monster but it's hella good fun. are another PvEVP event that I spoke about previously. These horde defense style events are likely to spawn following the leveling of a node or a world boss being killed. Quests are another form of PvE content and they come in multiple forms. Events, tasks, narrative quests, daily quests, epic and legendary quests, Ooh. racial quests, class quests, and caravan quests. Jumping puzzles will also be another fun aspect of PvE in Ashes of Creation. Oh, nice. You'll encounter oh, them whilst questing and exploring dungeons. There was already a few of these present in the game during the Alpha 1 test in 2021. Nice. Next, PvP content, and yes, there's a lot of it. First, let's discuss the open world PvP flagging system, otherwise referred to as the corruption system. Oh. In most cases, if killed by another player, the only things dropped upon death are gatherable and crafting materials. There's three okay. states a player can be in. Green, non-combatant, purple, combatant, and red, corrupted. Each player starts out as green unless they attack or fight back with another player, at which point they'll turn purple. Green non-combatant players who don't want to engage in PvP are still incentivized to at least run away or fight back, as being killed as a green player will result in dropping gatherable and crafting mats at twice the rate of if they'd have died whilst purple, aka fighting back. Oh shit, so if you- <laughs> What?! Uh, that's that's an interesting system. Hold on, let me let me go back to here. So non-combatant, if you ad get attacked by someone, they turn to purple. But if you don't attack back and you die, you do drop double the amount of stuff than if you actually at least try to defend yourself. Oh fuck! So imagine people who really don't want to fight. They just don't want to fight someone, and they just start running away. But they get caught, and maybe maybe they're new to the game, or or they've got a class that doesn't have much maneuverability. Um, and they just can't get away and then they just they don't attack and they just try and run away they die they drop they get punished for that player at which point they'll turn yeah. purple green non-combatant players who don't want to engage in pvp are still incentivized to at least run away or fight back as being killed as a green player will result in dropping gatherable and crafting mats at twice the rate of if they'd have wow. died whilst purple aka fighting back 
Purple indicates a state of consensual PvP. You're actually rewarded by dropping less gatherable mats on death if you die in this state. If a purple player kills a green player, then they become red, corrupted. Corrupted <laughs> players are criminals and will face increasing penalties the more green players they kill, such as dampening and even dropping their gear upon death. Oh shit! If you're a green, pure PvE player, you'd have to make someone pretty mad whilst gathering for them to want to turn red on you. If you haven't got any droppable crafting or gathering mats, there's absolutely no benefit for someone to flag and kill you. Right. So don't worry about people standing outside of nodes just spawn killing PvE players. <laughs> Most of the time, it won't be worth it. If that is something you're worried about though, a bounty hunter system will also exist where bounty okay. hunters can hunt down corrupted players for rewards. <laughs> Node sieges and castle sieges. <laughs> These are two different things. A node siege is what where players bounty come hunter, together man. to destroy a node. Well, maybe I'll just be corrupted. Level to allow adjacent nodes to progress to higher stages. The higher the level of the node, the more work is required to fulfill the prerequisites to declare the siege. Any player can declare a node siege, and once declared, a countdown begins giving players anywhere between two to five days notice, depending on the level of the node, to prepare for the impending battle. Players oh. cannot transport goods from their warehouse during this time, and many services in the node will also be disabled until the outcome of the siege is decided. Shit. Council sieges are massive large-scale 250 vs 250 player battles for guilds Holy. that occur once per month. There will be a total of five castles in the world. Castle sieges will have multiple objectives for both attackers and defenders, and might also include raid bosses that attackers can slay for certain buffs. These battles will include siege weapons <gasps> such as catapults, trebuchets, wow. cannons, and ballistas. And there will be a oh, I want to be that guy rewards for shooting that from that ballista. The five <laughs> in the world. Get wrecked. Guilds can declare war on each other via two the FPS gaming. Then holy moly! I hope it's optimized well. Fuck a duck. 250 versus 250, as well as loading the castle and potentially raid bosses. Jesus Christ. Are we all going to need like 40 nights for this? Once a war has been declared, players in those guilds can kill each other without penalties. Guild wars will have victory and surrender conditions, with guild war objectives spawning during the server's prime time. When it comes Jeez. to battlegrounds, Ashes of Creation will not have traditional MMO BGs where you can queue and are teleported to an instance. Oh. However, the game will have a gladiator-style last man standing arena where players can battle to become the mayor of militaristic nodes. Oh shit! Caravan PvP is something I spoke about earlier and will be a big catalyst for PvP in the open world. I can't believe they don't have a battlegrounds. And the game will have instanced arenas for 1v1, 3v3, and 5v5 oh, player group sizes, as well as the ability for players to duel each other for fun. Role players rejoice because Ashes of Creation certainly hasn't forgotten about you. <laughs> In fact, quite the opposite. This could be one of the most RP friendly MMOs ever made. First off, the game will have nine different playable races, no gender or race locked classes, each of which have their own architectural influence on the nodes they contribute the most XP to. Cool. You've got the Kalar and Veiloon humans, the Dunir and Nakua dwarves, the Renkai and Vek orcs, Empyrean and Pyre elves, and the recently revealed Tolnar. Earlier this year, Intrepid oh. revealed to us their top tier character customization suite, which, although at the time wasn't completely finished, was already up there as being one of the most in-depth in the MMO genre. Amazing. Right up there with Black Desert's character creator. But what's a good character creator without a good Holy fashion shit. and transmog system, right? In this game, you'll be able to collect appearances of weapons, armor, and accessories and apply it to what you've currently got equipped, similar to WoW's transmog system or Guild Wars 2's cool. wardrobe system. You will also be able to dye your gear. Diet as well. I hope there's an option to turn off player effects like in Lost Dark. There was um something at least similar in Arcage, and I reckon they they were easily put in. There there was um an option in Arcage where you'd click a button and it would just make all the enemies look like they're in like a blue standard armor, and then all your all friendlies like red standard armor. So it only had to render like one type of very basic armor. Um, you could also turn animations off. So instead of somebody running like this, it was like, like that. So as they moved and everything, it like 
skip things to help with your FPS. Additionally, those monthly cosmetic packs you've probably heard people complaining about in the past will be One Piece outfits similar to how it works in oh. Guild Wars 2. You won't be able to mix and match armor components from these full costumes, okay. meaning the most unique transmog combinations won't be something you can just buy from the cosmetic shop. We've already touched oh. on player housing earlier in this video, but to reiterate, they come in three types. Instance departments within nodes that anyone can gain access to for citizenship, real space mm -hmm. in node housing that level up with the node and That's real cool. space freeholds which are set size plots of land located within a node's area of influence so that's the stuff that's on the outside that is interesting i i think it would be a load of people would love to have a house on the inside maybe outside you've got the instant stuff as well just if you want to become like a citizenship uh, you want to have citizenship but there's no space for you there's no like physical space because there's obviously only a set amount of land Arcade was kind of similar. You'd have to wait for somebody to be AFK from the game for like a couple of weeks and basically quit. And then after a while, the house would just, there was a timer on it and it, you, you could go up and check and then it would just get like demolished. And then you could like everyone, everyone stand around on the countdown, like five seconds left before a house was about to be demolished because somebody was AFK and they'd all have their house and everything. Really, and it was basically whoever could click the fastest, like claimed it. Um, people used to have like macros and stuff where they just kind of click and the mouse would go to where the accept was. It go bam bam, they'd like accept it like straight away, and then they would try and sell sell it to the people that were like next to them trying to buy it. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. BDO BDO housing was nice too, very similar. Okay, nice. Again, I don't I don't know BDO, so they've obviously just gone to all the other games and got what's really cool and what worked and just like taken it, which is a good thing. Um, taken it and and got influence stuff from them and putting it in but i just i i like it i like plots like this on the outside if this was like just outside the gate it'd be kind of cool but it'd also be kind of cool to run into like um like a village and buy one of the earliest plots of like a little village somewhere and then just out of nowhere guilds start flocking to that area because maybe they really like it and it starts to build up that area and you've bought a house in like a little village and like randomly in the corner of the map somewhere but all of a sudden that becomes like a town and then becomes like a um like a city or something but i'm assuming i don't know exactly maybe he's gonna say it in a minute i'm assuming that if you if it was like a village or a town or something and you bought a house and then it got upgraded to like a city you'd still have your house but it would just get upgraded like you'd still own that bit because that would be kind of cool it would be something that you could go okay speculate to accumulate you could buy a house somewhere and just kind of hope that that area gets upgraded and then your house is all of a sudden worth a fortune First objective, get a nice house before anyone else. Exactly. You'll be able to decorate your player housing with furniture, craft and process materials at your freehold, and obviously throw kinky ERP <laughs> in the house with other players, which, let's be honest, is 90% of the reason why people RP in MMOs. <laughs> Situated inside nodes or freeholds, taverns are buildings that act as a social hub for players to relax, roleplay, buy consumables, play music, gain rested XP by... What are they going to do because in Arcade Plots had issues with people buying multi-accounts? I have no idea. I don't know if there's any defense against that. They might not be able to do anything about it. They might not. I don't know. Renting a room or partake in parlor games together. It's also possible that proximity voice chat will be enabled inside of taverns, although this will require <laughs> some testing. When it comes to emotes, Ashes of Creation will have all the standard animations you'd expect in an MMORPG, as well as consensual multiplayer emotes such as dancing and hugging. Additionally, oh, that's cool. you'll be able to interact with the environment by leaning on walls, sitting down, vaulting over fences, mantling, and crouching. I like, I was hoping they were going to say vaulting. This was something when they were talking about the puzzle jumping earlier. I'd love it if you could jump to a ledge, grab it, and go up. That kind of stuff makes the game feel way more fluid. Like if you ran over to here, but say your head only come up to there, and your arms come up to here, and you could just jump, grab it, and pull yourself up. It just makes the game feel so much more fluid. As previously mentioned, Ashes of Creation will have a political system where players like can compete to become the mayor of the node in numerous ways. From this, good mayors and bad mayors will emerge, which in itself is another aspect of roleplay. 
And finally, mm. yes, marriage, including same-sex marriages, will be a thing in Ashes of Creation. Get married! Marriage will allow player housing permissions to be shared, and a quest might appear related to a marriage ceremony. This system isn't 100% fleshed out as of making this video, but it will be in the game in one form or another. Hey, 200% taxes. <laughs> Next, let's discuss the world of Ashes of Creation, starting with the quest. server size, mm -hmm. which Intrepid are aiming to support 8,000 to 10, maybe. current players online at one time. Oh, Five shit. times the number of players that New World servers can currently handle. When it comes to server locations, the most recent info I could find is that they plan on having servers for the following regions. North America, Europe, Asia Pacific, and Australia. Oh! However, have, other server um, regions such as C South America well. are under consideration. Same. Steven, if you're watching this video, please heavily consider adding Southeast Asia servers. So many people here love MMOs, but we have to get wrecked by 150 to 200 ping connecting to Australia. This is it, the lazy peon lives in Thailand. I'm sure the same can be said there. for South America connecting to NA too. You're making the most highly anticipated MMO globally, and after all these years of development and anticipation, it'd be a big shame if large regions of people couldn't enjoy it to its fullest due to ping and server regions. As previously Personal mentioned, shout. the world- He's like, please, <laughs> please, I don't want a huge ping. The Ashes will be 480 kilometers square wow. launch, which includes land and water, that is cool. So you've got like floodplains, forests down around the back here, uh, deserts and more kind of like arid areas, another forest up here. This is like hilly. So there's Greenland, snowy mountains. It's cool. You've got a separate island. You've got a couple of separate islands off actually. This might be tropical. Might be like tropical beaches and tropical areas. Cool. With an additional 100 kilometers squared for the Underrealm. The world will be ever changing the under realm system and seasons, but I've already gone in depth on those systems at the start of this video, so best not to repeat myself further. When it comes to fast travel and flying mounts, the world of Ashes is designed so that distance and scale matters. Fast okay. travel will be limited to the superpower of a scientific node at Metropolis level. Holy! I mean, look how massive that is. Imagine coming over this hill. This is what is, is kind of cool with this game. Imagine coming over this hill, like early game, and you see like nothing much there or a little camp, right? And then you start fighting around this area and you come over this hill again, and you come over this hill again, and it eventually builds up into like a town. And then one day you come over this hill when it's this. That, that's what you have with this game. You could just be, you know, maybe you're farming deer up over this hill and just love running back over this hill. And all of a sudden you see this and you're going to be like, that wasn't there yesterday. <laughs> Can you imagine? Allowing players to teleport to smaller <laughs> nodes within the metropolis zone of influence and a family summon with a long cast time that can be used on up to eight family members. Oh, Flying cool. mounts will be extremely rare and limited in duration, with them being obtained via legendary drop eggs from world bosses or obtainable to mayors of metropolis nodes, as well as guild leaders owning one of the five castles in game. Wow. Out of 10,000 players per server, there's likely to only be between 10 and 15 players who have access to flying mounts at a time. That's this cool. This game isn't designed around flying. If you ever get to experience it, then it's a great achievement or you've been extremely lucky. Yeah. For the most part, you'll travel around the world via ground mounts, water mounts, or ships if you wish to traverse the Great Ocean. As I previously mentioned, Ashes will have a fully explorable ocean similar to Arcage. There'll be coastal nodes, harbors, naval caravans, treasure hunting, underwater dungeons, naval quests, naval PvP, and multiple different ship sizes ranging from small, medium, and large. I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking, what would this mean in terms of gameplay? So you don't have much fast travel unless your like home is in a scientific area. Um, and that gets up to metropolis level and then it unlocks fast travel and allows you to do that however that system works um but what i'm just thinking about is if you can't fast travel a lot and you've got like a house say where's where's the map where's the map right i'm, ju I'm just stick with me here i'm just kind of spitballing say you're here around this area maybe this is a node or this island or somewhere around here and this is where you choose to have a house let's say it's on on 
No, let's make it somewhere a bit more inland. Okay. Okay, let's say it's down in the desert. Don't, let's, let's say it's here, right? And you want to go explore a lot of stuff. And there's a town here, whatever. Maybe it's in this, this square. And I'm just thinking, like, what would most of your gameplay experience be? If you don't have fast travel, say there's a scientific thing up here. You don't have fast travel and your house is there and you only have your mounts. You, yeah, you can get on a ship and you can go and sail and stuff. But what would you do? If, say you just log on for like two, three hours. How, how much is exploration like credited or how much would you need to do it? If you could gather a load of resources and stuff here and just come back to your house. I, I'm just wondering how limited it might be because... Are, are you going to log in and feel like you have to stay by your town the whole time? Because you can't get to places fast. Because if you want to go up here, man, that's like a, probably a very long distance. Or you've got to go on your boat, which might be quicker. To go on your boat and like travel up through here, maybe come all the way around and get up to that area to explore it. But then when you're up there, you, you kind of got the same system that you got like, okay, if I want to get back home, I've got to go all the way back around. And all the way back down here, just to, like get back home. I, if there's no like recall, there was um, a family system you mentioned. Just does it? Is it going to feel a bit limited? In Arc Age, you had a teleport system where you had um, items, these like teleport stones, and you had a teleport book. And say you'd been to a city like over here and over here, you'd like unlock the ability to be able to just teleport there. Basically, you'd open up your book, you'd use a few of these resources, and you'd just summon a portal. And then you'd jump through the portal, and bam, you'd be in that area. So you could teleport around to most places in the game fairly easily, although it did cost you a little bit of resources, not much. But in here, if they're saying they want to limit it, I'm just thinking, are you going to be limited to mainly staying in your area? Mayor that puts 200% taxes we kill on site in the game, can you imagine? The world yeah, it's out of 10,000 players experience it, then it's a great harbors, naval caravans, treasure hunting, underwater dungeons, naval quests, naval PvP, and multiple different ship sizes ranging from small, medium, and large. Similar to our ships, there will also be giant sea monster world bosses, like Ooh. the Megalith, which was recently teased and should be present in Alpha 2. Nice! The story is definitely something that's present in Ashes of Creation, however, it's not one of those MMOs where you're the chosen one, hero of light, center of the universe, god of all things, Things, with NPCs worshipping you upon sight because you followed the same linear story as millions before you. <laughs> I hope it won't be like this. Um, it will be fun first four or five times when you explore, when you move around from A to B. But if you play for longer, that will kill the game. That's what I was thinking, Solus. That, that's why I wanted to mention it. Because as you were talking about the boats, I was just thinking about like how viable... Is it going to be for you to go off and explore and go off and explore and go off and explore and go to here and go to there? Or are you going to be more tied or feel more obligated to stay around the house and the node and the city and stuff that you've like invested some time in? And then you just basically end up just being there most of the time. Travel off for like a little bit of a boss and come back. But if you can't get to places fast, um, what games it remind me of? Valheim. Valheim is a game where I felt like if I went really far on my boat, I was just like, oh my god, like it's gonna take me so long to get back. I'm not sure what that game's like now. Um, but when it first came out and I played it, I was like, I'm going so far away. You'd spend half an hour going in one direction to explore somewhere else. I was like, I've got to spend half an hour of my own real time to get back to my base. And I was like, it really, really annoyed me. Like, really annoyed me. So Kind of hoping it's not like that. will be more based on learning about past events in the lore, self-contained short story quests, and the overarching story of the world's development. This game actually has a ton of lore, with a lot of stuff being kept secret for launch, but you can read more about that stuff on the wiki, as this video is starting to get pretty long as it is. For me, it's painful to take the insta ship in Lost Ark and then just talk the, the NPC to click destination. There's too much, you just want to go, map. City, be there. <laughs> artisan classes and professions. All right, check this out. The artisan class and profession system in Ashes looks something like this. You've got three artisan classes, gathering, processing, or crafting, okay. each of which contain various professions. Gathering professions include farming, fishing, herbalism, lumberjacking, mining, and taming. Taming! Processing professions include animal husbandry and smelting, and crafting professions include alchemy, armor smithing, blacksmithing, caravan building, carpentry, Ow. cooking, jewel crafting, scribes, ship building, ship siege build. weapons, okay. and 
and weaponsmithing. Oh, cool. A character may only master up to a maximum of two professions within one artisan class. So let's okay. say you choose to be a gatherer. You could max out mining and lumberjacking, but you could not max out mining and alchemy. If you're a crafter, you could choose to oh. max out cooking and jewel crafting, but you could not max out cooking and smelting. To get around this limitation, you may use alts or join guilds and work together to fulfill your crafting needs. The most unique profession in Ashes of Creation has to be animal husbandry, in which you can breed different animals together to create weird and wonderful hybrid mounts. <laughs> Like this wonderful half griffin, half butterfly, raccoon monstrosity. <laughs> oh my god. Finally, let's discuss what for many people is the most important thing about Ashes of Creation. The combat and class system. Mm -hmm. Ashes of Creation will have a hybrid combat system similar to Guild Wars 2. In previous videos, I couldn't really show you what this combat would well, look those like. those dashes. But recently, they've made that substantial cool. progress and shown off some basic melee weapon attacks. And boy, does it look a hell of a lot better than the combat the game had in past tests. There we go. So that's what we were talking about earlier when we were looking at it. And I was telling you that... It was like old footage and it didn't look amazing. And I'll be the first to say that as well. It didn't look amazing. But I think it's going it, to... This looks a bit better and I think it's going to look even better by the time it comes out. As this system is in the middle of a full redesign and we haven't even had the chance to see a lot of the redesigned abilities yet, I'm not going to talk too in-depth on it. Sure. But basically, when it's done, expect Guild Wars 2 combat, but better. Some abilities okay. need to be targeted, whilst others are AoE Telegraph and Frontal Cone attacks. You'll be able to dodge, blink, and iframe depending on your class. A lot of if effort is going into audio-visual feedback. And as you can see by the damage numbers, they're going with something that looks very vanilla WoW, which I personally love. Nice. Keep an eye out for more updates on this system over the next Thousand. few months. But so far, the new design direction is looking very good. When it comes to classes, cool. Ashes of Creation is using a similar system to Arcage, like but instead of a possible 220 classes, there's <laughs> 64 different possible class combos in Ashes. The way this works is you've got eight primary classes, Bard, I like this. Cleric, Fighter, I like Mage, this a lot. Ranger, Rogue, Summoner, and Tank. You can then choose a secondary class out of the same eight options to determine your overall class. If your primary class is Fighter and your second class is also Fighter, you'd be a Weapon Master, for example. Mage Primary, Summoner Secondary would be Warlock. Summoner Primary, Mage Secondary would be Spellmancer. You get the idea. When it comes to leveling, the level cap at launch will be level 50, and okay. it's intended to take roughly 45 days of playing 4-6 to six hours per day to reach max level. Oh my god! 45 days of 4 to 6 hours, which is probably more than casual, if he's saying it that. Jesus. Okay, uh, fair. It's going to take a little bit, guys. At each level, you'll receive various rewards from skill points to new quest unlocks and other stuff to make leveling feel rewarding. Congrats, you made it. You've made it this far. Congratulations. You've just been absolutely battered with information. <laughs> and my brain is starting to shut down from the sheer amount of research and writing that's gone into this video. It's been five years since my first Ashes of Creation vid back in 2017. And the footage of the game back then compared to now is completely unrecognizable. Yeah. Intrepid Studios has Remember watching a that. team size of over 150 developers, attracting some of the best MMO talent from North America. And since the upgrade to Unreal Engine 5, they've been absolutely pumping out substantial progress with every dev live stream. Love it. Some might say that I shouldn't hype this game so much, and it's still just a pipe dream. But honestly, I think there's nothing wrong with getting excited for a new MMO, especially in a genre that's been so full of disappointment for so many years. The excitement, anticipation, and speculation of a new MMO is almost as fun as playing it at this point. But hey, <laughs> maybe you could say I'm high on copium. <laughs> what the hell is this? No, no, what, what's going on? <laughs> Sir, there's a massive spike in the copium levels. What do we do? Yes, I felt it. <laughs> it's time. Initiate Operation Hopium. <laughs> well, that's it for this video, guys. <laughs> nice. Oh, that was cool. I hope this game won't encourage you to make arts like Lost Dark. I feel 
I feel that it won't, but I don't know for sure. And the only reason I feel like it won't is because if it's anything like Arcage, and it has massive Arcage influences, and I know for a fact Steven played it loads, and I can see them all over the place from how much I played it. Um, I feel like, because in Arcage, you would have like one character basically, and then you would equip a skill tree. As I said, you had defense one, mage one, ranger, there's like melee based ones. And, this. and then as you did stuff and got experience, it leveled up the skill trees that you had on. So if you were questing or killing stuff, those skill trees would level up. Um, and here you can obviously choose, similar to kind of arcade, you choose two classes, right? And then you choose like mage and fighter and it makes you a certain class. I feel like they may implement a system similar to that maybe that you equip like the classes that you want and maybe they level up or maybe it's your character that levels up and then you have separate points for for the skill skill trees like if you're like mage or bard or tank I, i'm not sure but i i feel like you could have one character that would be able to my point is is to be able to go into these different classes so you could be like a mage ranger and then the week after just become like a tank bard or something or a, a, you know and maybe you'd have to do something to level it up separately, but eventually you get to the point on one character. Again, in our case, you get one point on one character, we'd have all skill trees completely maxed up and leveled out if you wanted to do it, which is hella cool because it meant that you could, if you had the gear for it, you could just swap on the same character. You could be a mage for like the first like five months playing it and then be like, I, I want to be melee now. I want to be a melee tank. You could be a mage assassin and just swap to melee tank. But you'd have to get the gear and everything for it, which would be a lot of investment, but it was... It was cool that you could just swap. You swap because I swapped loads in Arcage. I used to swap depending on what I was doing. I would just swap, and then there was a point where I was I was a mage primarily, a, a DPS kind of assassin mage primarily, and then I swapped to becoming like a mage tank. I got some gear for like with the guild we had. I got some gear that made me more tanky, and then I was an engager. So instead of being like a a, a glass cannon mage like assassin that did loads of damage but died really fast and then i would i would become the tank and i would be the one jumping in it's like a skull skull something or other it had like tank mage and one other thing and i i wore like cloth armor but it was like really good against magic um damage and i would just go in and just like pull in like 20 players i had this armor set that was really unique and hard to get that would for from a, a world boss um, that I would be able to jump into the middle of loads of people, activate this this armor, this the set set armor, and it would pull in loads of people from around me, and then and then every everyone right behind me would just like pummel them down, and I could go in, put on like a load of defensive stuff, have some like healing buffs, be able to tank like twenty people temporarily attacking me, and then just pull everybody in, and then have a like a raid group behind me that just fire a load of AOEs and just kill like twenty people in one go. It's fucking phenomenal really cool but it's the fact that i could swap and do that or then i could be one of the mages at the back just dishing out damage it was really interesting um i really hope that this has something like that where you can swap or maybe maybe it's like new world where you just have like a weapon on and um if you have like a staff on it beca you become some kind of mage like a mage first tried arcage arcage once lost interest really quick i i played it i actually bought in um i bought a pack Back in the day, I actually like eight years ago, seven, eight years ago now, I started streaming back then. I uh, I streamed for like about a year, then had to stop until about a year ago. Um, but I bought into like the alpha or something and there wasn't, back then there was nowhere near as many people streaming as there is now. And there was even less people that, that were willing to pay like the hundred pounds to get in. Um, and it, it was it was great. I started playing it back then and then I got really hooked on it. We made... A, a guild, which I, I didn't plan on doing, but there's quite a few people following the stream and stuff, made a guild. I became one of the most powerful guilds, like 450 people, I think, maybe 460 people that were very active, actually, um, at, like, its peak. And, you know, here in this video, when they were talking about, like, the mayor of a town is, like, one person out of, like, thousands, uh, people who own a um, castle, and then the guild leader of that guild gets a special flying mount, that was a very similar system in Arcage. They released an update six months into the game where you could capture a castle. My guild actually got one. So it was four castles. There was thousands of guilds. My guild got one and I had the special mount. I actually had, it was a, a horse that was like on fire, but it was faster than all the other mounts. And you could get this, right? Get this. This was, this was funny. You could force players around you 
to bow to you. It had like a half an hour cooldown. You'd run into like a middle of a city. There was loads of players around. You'd press the button and everybody would stop what they were doing. Speech bubbles would come across the head and it would make everybody bow to you and then they would stand back up and they could carry on. It was, it was funny. <laughs> it was funny to say the least, but I was very successful in that game. Um, had a big following and had um, a very good, very strong guild, very coordinated. And I had an alliance and God, it was, it was a lot of work, but it was, it was, it was good. But, uh, you know, I had a lot of advantages for being the guild leader. It was, it was literally like a job, like a second job to keep everything going. But it was an incredible reward. Probably the highlight of my gaming career, um, if you want to call it that, of, of being like um, a castle owner and being the guild leader of it that, that got like a lot of prestige because of that. Cool. Two to three months ago, terror servers went off forever. They did. Yeah, terror online. Most of your MMO career, right? Okay, but let's finish this, this one. This one took a ton of work to make, so please help me out by leaving a comment, destroying that like button for the <laughs> algorithm. Thirty one k. And give if it you like, plan sure. on playing Ashes anyway, signing up for this the game code. using my referral code. Let me know your thoughts on Ashes of Creation in the comments below, and have you changed your mind on the project in recent years? As what more you think stuff then, has been shown. Thumbs Thanks up, for thumbs down. And I'll see you opium, in the next copium. One. Do you think? I honestly think it it looks it looks quite good. Uh, I'm I'm excited to follow it and then get my hands on it later down the line to see how the game is. But yeah, I'm um, as I say, I'm gonna I'm gonna follow it. I might do I might cover it or I might just do some react videos or something like this. I'm I'm excited to see how it goes. Um, but yeah, thank you thank you so much everybody for for joining the stream. If you're still not convinced. Well, we'll see. We'll just see. I guess we'll, we'll see. I'm I'm excited because they're, they're reworking all the combat stuff. I want to see how like the graphics and things are with that. Going from Unreal 4 to Unreal 5. 